As you can see, Mother Nature has sprinkled a little bit of snow here in the landscape. I was hoping there would be a little bit of snow also on the little tree here that I've talked about so much, but uh, unfortunately there wasn't. So let's see what I come home with. But there is a nice sun behind the clouds there. Uh, it is an overcast day, so maybe light is not optimal, but let's see what I can make of it. In Denmark we have this television show where they, they give uh, five young designers an assignment. They say to them, you need to design and prototype, build a prototype of whatever in three weeks. Three weeks and then you have to come back and present your result. And they do that for four or five different categories. So this time around it was to design an outdoor light, an outdoor lamp. So what really strikes me with these young designers is that they, after the three weeks, when they present their results to the judges, the evaluation board, whatever it's called, their results are so different. And I'm just, you know, impressed by human creativity as such. And even though they get exactly the same task, they come home with something that is so different. I'm really blown away by, by that and uh, basically by human creativity. You can see here, as I mentioned, Mother Nature has sprinkled a little bit of snow here and it always gives a nice touch. Yeah, they leave the wood as it is. They don't remove it anymore. And I think it's because they want the microorganisms to eat the tree so that it supports the biodiversity. So it's very much in fashion not to move the tree here. The gardeners, they uh, just leave it be and let Mother Nature sort of do her own recycling or upcycling process for the wood. So the guy in the kayak here is Christian and he's an interesting guy. He has actually built his own kayak and uh, he's also uh, a bit concerned about the environment. He's collecting garbage that he finds on his way. And if you notice, there was actually some garbage on the front of his kayak that he has collected this morning. He apparently collects garbage every time he's out and about. And uh, he says that people will throw whatever into the lake. I actually thought we had moved beyond that, but apparently not. So on this channel, I previously talked about micro variations, which is when you take a series of images, you just vary ever so slightly. Here's a Danish painter, Wilhelm Lundström. He's the, the color and the shape, uh, the renewer of the color and shape, it means in Danish here. Yeah. So even though Wilhelm wasn't a photographer, he did work with micro variations. And you can see here, there's a still life here. And if you take a look at the Second page here, you can see it's actually exactly the same subject, but he has, of course, varied the distance to the subject and he has varied the intensity of the colors. The point is not which one you like the most. The point is just that small variations can actually make a very, very big difference. Also, when it comes to paintings, obviously. And uh, I can show you another example here where he has worked same subject or same still life. But you can see it's very, very different results and expressions you get. I th just thought it was funny that, you know, painters actually also work with micro variations. I'm not sure he called it that, but uh, that he was trying with different effects to see what he could make of it. So in the last video, Tony wrote that Maybe there was a good, a good motive here with the trees crossing and suggested some evening sun and uh, a long lens. <laughs> I have neither evening sun nor a long lens, but uh, I agree there is something here where you could really get a good image. Maybe going further that way and then taking a long lens. Yeah, I think that will do for now, but definitely a spot that is worth 
coming back to here. One of the things about the Lumix here is that it has the on-off button sitting uh, sort of below the mode selector. And then here in the front, where I'm used to from the Nikon to have the on-off switch, it then has the front command dial. <laughs> and that means instead of turning the camera off, I'm, I'm just switching the aperture and uh, then I leave the camera on. So um, I really have to get used to that. It is a bit funny how you know, it just sits in your fingers when you've been an icon shooter for so many years that, of course, you turn off the camera uh, here at the front on the on the top here, uh, just below the, the the shutter button. If you like me, use Instagram. I'm sure you're only too aware that Instagram only accepts a square format, which can be a bit annoying if uh, you're trying to frame your images very precisely. Yes, for instance, by 16 by 9 or whatever is to your liking, 4x3. And you can see here I have taken a 16x9 image and put it into a wide frame so that it fits into the square format. But of course the image becomes a little bit smaller that way. So what you can do is if you have an image like this one here, is you can cut out two images from the same image and they need to be fit together very precisely the left hand side and the right hand side and that's what I've done here and then I have uploaded them in the same upload and you can see as I'm swiping here I'm struggling a little bit it looks like one big image but actually it is two images just lying next to each other and here towards the end in the third image I have the full image so that we can see it and uh, that's a way to get around the square format of Instagram. Yeah, I'm not sure how strong the storyline in this video was actually, but the points I was trying to get across related to design and how you as a photographer, by the decisions you make, and it can be micro variations, it can be how you frame your image, it can be many things. The classic, of course, is composition and color rendition, color grading and all of that. But many, many, many decisions go into how you design your image. And uh, I hope this was a little bit inspiration and some food for thought into that process. Speaking of design, I was visiting the Danish Design Museum today. And uh, look what I found on the shelf there. A book about Sol Leiter. So I will look forward to reading that and tell you what I think of it. The inner game of outdoor photography has still not arrived, unfortunately. But I hope it will soon. It is planned to arrive next week, so fingers crossed. I will leave you with some images that I shot today at the Danish Design Museum. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.